Thank you very much, Brian. And um, thanks for the opportunity of, uh, of speaking today. Um, when, I, when I was asked whether, whether or not I would be doing that, um, I was quite thrilled, I have to say. Now, um, after going back home and doing th some thinking, what I was actually going to talk about today um, put me into a slightly difficult position because when I was uh, told that I was having uh, 15 minutes roundabout to talk about, well, you obviously, if you were going to talk about the NHS, you could spend half a day on that, but um, that's, uh, that's not the point for today. So um, maybe just, just a few words um, to the network. I think when I've been first introduced um, to Brian and the idea behind the Northwest uh, Coast Academic Health Science Network, I was quite, um, quite thrilled by the idea, and I think there's a lot of great potential in the idea of you know, connecting um, industry, connecting innovation, connecting um, hospitals and um, universities, um, because this is where I think the, the key lies to unlock the potential. Now, um, when, I, when I came to the UK just about a year ago, oh, hang on a second. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I still felt that um, despite all the positivity and the positive discussions, there in some areas, of course, um, and none of that being in the room today, there may still be some kind of uh, deep-rooted suspicion um, towards industry. Now, um, around... Uh, do these guys just milk the NHS to line their shareholders' pockets? Or, you know, what does, what does partnership actually really look like? And I would say, despite all the uh, positivity that we've heard of, of John this morning and, um, and, and Simon, um, and the fact that all of us should have progressed on already, there are still this, or there is still this kind of misconception in some areas. And I would say it even gets worse because uh, you may realize I'm not, uh, I'm not Brit, in fact, I'm, I'm German, so uh, the, <laughs> the immediate conclusion, I'm not Darth Vader, just to <laughs> ensure you there. But um, I think the, the key for me is really finding a way to, to unlocking that potential that is in the, in the um, NHS. And um, I'll talk to you a little bit about um, Hartmann in a second. Um, myself, I've pretty much been all over the world. I've worked in a lot of different healthcare systems, and uh, I think that's, that puts quite an interesting angle on, on how the NHS works, because obviously I haven't grown up in the system. I'm, uh, I'm just getting, getting my teeth in, and um, you immediately realize a lot of, a lot of things that are, that are going on there. And um, now, I was asked to talk about uh, relationship management, and um, I would have uh, particularly said from price to partnership um, for a reason, and um, I hope we'll, we'll get there um, in the end. Now, um, at Hartman, we really do care about efficiency, about getting our customers um, to, the next, to the next level. And I mean, that uh, could be an empty shell, I, I agree, but there are a lot of things that we bring to the table um, to do that. Now, just to get a, to get a feel, um, and if you could um, show me hands, um, how many of you know Hartman? How many of you are familiar with what we do? I don't know. Okay, that's pretty much, I would say, half the room. So um, I'll just um, give you a quick insight um, on who we are and what we do. And um, despite the fact that uh, we've... Uh, We've heard a lot about SME engagement uh, earlier on. Now you will realize in a minute we are not an SME, but after all, we're not so much different when it comes to um, dealing dealing with the NHS. Now, who are we? We're a global leader. We're a German-based company, global leader in medical uh, products. We supply to around about 38 countries globally, and uh, our customers are nursing homes, hospitals, all the like. We've got three 
core areas um, of expertise, contents products, operating theater products, and wood management. And um, we turn over the equivalent of around about one and a half billion um, pounds. We employ 10,000 people worldwide to give you a little bit of an idea of the, of the size of the organization. But when it comes to the UK, we are established since around about 30 years, close to 90 people based just down the road in Haywood, uh, north of Manchester. We are working with around about um, 300 NHS trusts across the country, um, private hospitals, NHS organizations, um, chemist wholesalers, nursing homes, and individual patients. The, and that's Hartman, Hartman in a nutshell. And you can already see from there, uh, yes, we've, we may have a strong uh, mothership in the background, but uh, in the UK, we are also a small organization compared to a lot of companies that are out there in the market. And in fact, um, and I'll get to that later on, I don't think there's that much of a, of a difference when it comes to engaging with the NHS, apart from probably, probably a, a historical aspect in terms, of, in terms of doing what you've always done um, because you've always been there. Now, I'm going to pick one particular example. You've seen that you know, we're, we're trading in a, lot of, in a lot of different areas, and I would like to focus today on one specific example of our business because I think it is of great relevance to um, what has been discussed earlier on already. And um, at the same time, also the example which um, gave us the Supplier of the Year Award last year, our home delivery service. And um, the key around our, our home delivery um, service and the, um, the re relevance to engaging with the NHS is around making the patient's life different. And um, the, when, we, when we started or pioneered the service around about 20, 20 odd years ago, um, people had to pick up their continence products in their local area, not a lot of dignity possibly. And I think we've, we've worked together with the NHS already back then to deliver or shape a service that made a difference to, to the patients. And um, just to give you an idea of the impact that we've had over the years, we've served around about 650,000 patients over the years uh, in the NHS, so quite a large number. And um, to make it even more specific to today, um, we are um, very closely working together with, um, with the Manchester Trust, Central Manchester University Hospital, um, South Manchester University Hospital, Stockport, and the Pennine Acute Trust. And um, I think some of um, these guys are here in the room today as well. Um, so if you want to get some more insight on how we actually engage with them, I think it would be a great, um, great idea to, to go out and uh, talk to them. Now, um, what that is all about, you know, going, reaching out to the patient, I would like to show you with an example, which is unsolicited letters we've got from a couple of patients. And I'll just give you a second to read through those. This is an example of a, of a lady who actually took the effort of writing to our uh, corporate headquarters in Germany. That's of a gentleman um, who was very pleased to receive our products and services. And that is an example of how we have really impacted the quality of life of an elderly 
person in the community. Now, the reason why I'm showing this, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to go on about us as an organization or make this a marketing gig for, for Hartman. The key why, I'm, um, why I like to show those patient stories is to show you the difference we can make if industry and the NHS is working together in a, in a partnership approach. And it's those kind of letters that kind of, I mean, after, after a long week of continuous meetings, backlog of emails, um, that's what gets me actually going and um, uh, gets me to put in the extra effort and the extra hour um, because it's those patients that we all serve, not only we as an industry, but everyone, everyone in the room. And um, now, what does that mean to the NHS? Yes, we do provide competitive pricing, we provide premium products, user-friendly IT systems, high-quality training, and that all has an impact on how you as organizations can work and can provide services to your patients. And um, we've heard this morning when John Warrington spoke about how important innovation is, uh, how important efficiency is to the NHS. And I think it's exactly that type of engagement that leads to increased efficiency and ultimately um, cost savings. So if we talk about innovation, you won't hear me talk about products or product innovations or the very latest development. We are more about improving processes, improving procedures, because this is where we feel um, a lot of the improvement can, um, can be un unlocked. However, that does require dialogue. And I think this is um, where we currently see the biggest, the biggest issue at the moment with our, with our customers or within the NHS. Now, there are great examples, and I've, I've named uh, four of them before, part of the Northwest um, arena. And we've got others across the country where we've got a great engagement going on with, where we've got great discussions with those um, procurement departments and clinicians working hand in hand to improving services in their area. However, there are also a lot of other examples where we're simply excluded from those discussions. And I guess that is um, where we face some difficulties. Regardless of whether we're a larger organization or maybe an SME in the room, I guess the problem always starts when you can't have the dialogue. Now, I don't want to—I don't want to make this uh, sound like uh, whinging about the NHS because that's not the case. I think the NHS is a great place and has a has a great potential, and it always takes two to tango. And just to give you give you a lot of examples, um, when uh, when Simon Walsh spoke earlier about um, how organisations have to adapt themselves to the NHS. And I guess this is where I found my organization being guilty of, for example, when I, when I, when I joined. Because we've, uh, we've been in a state where you know, we've been quite successful over the years by doing what we've, what we've done. And we haven't really thought about you know, how, how do we possibly have to make things different uh, if we want to engage with the new NHS or with the NHS as it is at the moment. And, um, what we've done, in fact, over the last 12 months is to rethink the way we, we engage with the NHS. Um, we've had a few reorganizations in the company just to enable us to work better and closer with the NHS, with procurement departments. Um, we've, we've listened to calls of you know, getting more clinicians on board, for example. So um, as a matter of fact, we've employed five clinicians just in the last 10 months, more or less, in the organization um, to get uh, to back up our claims. You know, we're talking about education and delivering education, and we're getting people on board to actually do that and to make that service more relevant. But um, the, difficulty, or the, the difficulty comes when this doesn't happen. And I can understand, to a certain extent, where this comes from, because on the one hand side, 
and Simon, uh, no, John mentioned this this morning as well. On the one hand side, all of, all of you are being asked to deliver not only 1.5, but between 1.5 and 2 billion uh, pounds of savings. Um, we've heard about the three-year inflation uh, free policy. On the other hand side, um, patient safety is a focus, effectiveness of care, um, patient experience, and that's kind of an amb ambiguous situation that somehow needs to be resolved. Now, where that leads to is something that we as a supplier can see on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, on the one hand side, you've got um, people like Simon who interpret that in a very specific uh, way, who are able to translate that on, a, on an A4 page uh, in terms of how supplier engagement should look like specifically for their trust. But then again, that looks completely differently to the next organization down the road. And um, we've, we've heard uh, another gentleman speak this morning about transferability of specific initiatives or products or innovation. Now, as a supplier to the NHS, I have to unfortunately tell you that that's not the case, not in reality, because the amount of time we spend in doing the same thing over and over again, where we work with one organization and prove that whatever service or product we're delivering works, and having to replicate the exact same thing over and over again with the next trust down the road is very, very time consuming, hence not efficient. Um, it's promoting waste in the system rather than taking it away. The, the time Clinicians, for example, I mean, if we talk about procurement pro processes, do spend on evaluations where you would say, well, hang on a second, um, are you going for a tabletop evaluation, just to pick one example, or do you actually rely on a, a lab test that's already been done and uh, move on to the next step? This is um, where we see a lot of difficulties from an engagement side. Now, on the other hand, um, I guess there is a lot of potential in there because if we were going to work closer together, um, a lot of these things could be resolved. And um, now you all may remember old Henry Ford. And I uh, guess that's something that's true for all of us, and we've heard about change this morning. Um, you always do what you've always done. You always get what you've always got. And um, this is what we would like to change. And I guess for me, the, the, the call to action from an industry perspective is talk to us, you know, talk to, com not, not, don't, don't, don't necessarily talk to Hartmann, talk to companies like us that are the experts in a specific area of what they're doing, and before you take a decision from a procurement perspective, reach out and see if we can find a, find a solution together that possibly also contributes and helps you to achieve your targets around efficiency, around savings, um, we're, not, we're not claiming um, to run your organizations better, or we don't want to run your hospitals. I think you're the experts in doing that. However, there are specific elements of your daily work where an engagement can make a huge difference. And this is um, what I would like to share with you today. Thank you very much. <laughs>